there are no bad cameras. It's interesting to look back at the progression cameras have taken. These days, most of us can agree that SLRs and rangefinders are the two dominant schools of 35mm photography, and in the mirrorless era, cameras have been built with either one of those design philosophies in mind. While SLRs have gone from the all-metal, compact, analog aesthetic of the Nikon Fs, Canon A's, and Pentax MX's to the polycarbonate bodies of today, rangefinder and rangefinder-style cameras have not. Perhaps the brand that led the charge for retro-inspired cameras was Fujifilm. The original X100 was released in 2011 and featured a metal body, relatively large sensor, and a relatively fast lens. In 2020, great build quality and an APS-C size sensor might be the lowest requirement to be classified as a serious camera, but in 2011 it wasn't as commonplace. And more importantly, Fujifilm's inclusion of a physical dedicated aperture control around the lens and a physical dedicated shutter speed dial on the top of the camera were mind-blowing. It was bold. It was radical. The offset OVF, which during Leica's struggles of the 70s was seen as a detriment, was a breath of fresh air. The ethos of the rangefinder had come to affordable mainstream digital. The detractors of Fuji's audacity said it was a fad, that modern camera controls evolved from more primitive dials and rings for a reason. I don't disagree. Some people have certain shooting styles or settings that benefit from different types of controls. That's fine. But they were certainly wrong about the aesthetic not going the distance. We're still less than a decade later, and the X100 is on its fifth variation, and the X body and lens system have grown to include many successful lines of cameras. For me, the X100 was my first foray into digital photography. I was attracted to the X100 for the same reason many others were. It was the prettiest camera on sale. The control style being very similar to old pre-autofocus cameras was just another plus. I suspect many people, whether professionals or total beginners, looked at the growing Fuji lineup with a bit of lust. And I also suspect that many beginners attracted to the aesthetic championed by Fuji, Leica, Olympus Pen, and many others are often told that it doesn't matter what your camera looks like, they just take pictures after all. They're right. It really doesn't matter. However, if anything, the fact that it doesn't matter speaks to the importance of diversity among these amazing machines. We're going through somewhat of a renaissance in photography, with more people discovering a love of manual and film photography. While we probably have to give a lot of credit to early Canon Rebels for laying the groundwork, we also have to acknowledge that new markets for vintage and new rangefinders and celebrity purchases of rarish film compacts have put analog and analog-ish forms of photography back in people's minds. People who may have thought the world of photography was out of their reach now can see it becoming more accessible. People who may have thought a DSLR was too bulky and conspicuous now know of sleek and fashionable designs that better suit their lifestyles. The purists and some of us may scoff at this new trend, and get angry that prices of Contax T2s or Leica M6s are actually creeping back up. But let's be honest with ourselves. If we want people to appreciate photography, and for our beloved relics of companies to survive into the future, we need this reality. After all, why should we have a problem with some of us enjoying premium products as symbols of status or simply as aesthetically pleasing objects if the rest of us enjoy sticking said products in people's faces to get those sick street shots? Cameras are functional, but they are also as beautiful as they are functional. Let's not forget that. And let's not forget that while enjoying these objects for their rarity or for their value in Instagram fashion, one might shoot a few rolls of film and realize that this form of art is wondrous. The desire for something shiny can pretty easily turn into a drive to create. There are many trends in the photographic industry that give us a lot of insight into how we interact with our technology. I feel that events like Leica's resurgence in the last decade as a luxury brand, or the recent boom in film photography or retro designs popping up in gear, show us that photography has moved to contributing to lifestyles, rather than being purely documentary. Everyone will have their opinions about whether or not this is good for the industry, but let me give you an example from another industry of why democratizing art is a good thing. I'm a big fan of Porsche, and if I had it my way, the only cars that Porsche would sell are the Cayman Boxster Twins and the 911. Imagine my dismay when I realized that this legendary car manufacturer was to rebadge a few Audi SUVs and sell them at a sweet premium, with no real focus on the driving experience or the brand's long heritage in road and race cars. Life isn't as simple as wishing everybody would buy the same things you would buy, however. Porsche realized that there was a huge market that they would miss out on if they didn't appeal to the masses, and that perhaps the future of the brand depended not on drive quality, but sales. Personally, I had to realize that if Porsche were to continue to create the cars that I loved, that they had to sell something else in significantly higher volumes. This is the dualist reality of historical brands. 
You can stick to your guns and go out of business, or you can find a way to continue existing. Many of us love photography, and we get worked up about it and wax poetic constantly because of that passion. Sometimes we lose sight of the fact that for photography to survive, it has to sell. Leica needs to rebrand Panasonic's. Fuji needs to sell Instaxes and X-T100s. Film as an industry needs young people to fall in love with Olympus XAs and Contax G2s. For the rest of us, it means opening our minds to the developments in film and vintage camera sales, even if it raises prices. And it means truly accepting the virtues of new product lines, even if they don't pander to our desires. Photography is sharing, and we can only grow more in it if we open our arms to that sharing. So next time you go on eBay and see a Contax T2 for over $2,000, don't judge. That T2 is part of the reason photography is alive and strong. Why not take the time to try an old digital GR or an MJU? After all, 